Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Now, throughout the pandemic, vitamin D has been in the spotlight and vitamin D deficiency has been associated with worse COVID-19 outcomes. Now, this week, we are going to look at a new study that says most of us should stop wasting our money on vitamin D supplements and stop taking it altogether. Is that really the case? Let's find out. For years, vitamin D has been associated with beneficial effects in many conditions, from mood disorders to heart disease prevention. One large clinical trial of vitamin D focused on whether vitamin D would help prevent bone fractures in midlife and older adults. The short message is that they find out vitamin D did not have an impact on reducing bone fractures in midlife and older adults. Now let's look at the detail of the study. It is published in the New England Journal of Medicine and it is part of a larger study called VITO. Now this sub-study was a randomized controlled trial that investigated whether supplementing 2,000 international units of vitamin D per day compared with placebo would prevent bone fracture in healthy older adults. The study had 25,871 total participants. About half of them took vitamin D and another half took a placebo. Slightly more than half of the participants were women and the average age was about 67 years old. Most participants had sufficient vitamin D level with just 2.4% having a severe deficiency. After an average follow-up of 5.3 years, they saw 769 of 12,927 participants in the vitamin D group had bone fractures, and 782 of 12,944 participants in the placebo group had bone fracture. There were no significant differences between the two groups, and the study concluded that daily vitamin D supplementation did not significantly lower the risk of fractures than placebo in generally healthy midlife and older adults who were not selected for deficiency in vitamin D low bone mass, and osteoporosis. An editorial was also published on the same day as the vitamin D study by two medical doctors. The editorial basically summarized the study's main findings and added some opinions. The authors stated that perhaps people with little or no sunlight exposure or have trouble absorbing nutrients or those receiving treatments for osteoporosis may benefit from vitamin D supplementation. But healthy people should stop taking vitamin D supplements to prevent major diseases or extend life. Now I have some problem or a little bit critiques of this study and let's take a look. Vitamin D is important in general, while many of us can get vitamin D from sunlight in the summer, those with naturally dark skin and who live anywhere above latitude 33 degrees will make less vitamin D, particularly in the winter. Vitamin D is also needed for calcium absorption. Children with vitamin D deficiency can develop a condition called rickets, in which their bones are soft and deformed due to failure to incorporate calcium minerals. Similar conditions in adolescents and adults are called osteomalacia, where bones are weak and at higher risk of fracturing. This study enrolled participants that were generally healthy, they did not have a history of cancer or heart disease, and most of them had a good level of vitamin D begin with. Hence, it is not surprising to fail to see the benefit of vitamin D in preventing bone fractures in this particular group of participants. And I think there are several factors that are missing in this study. 
And since we've been talking about vitamin D, and you know this one would be calcium, it is well established that vitamin D promotes calcium absorption. Although the participants had normal calcium levels at baseline, how their calcium level and intake might have changed over the years was not known. Now, the study showed that vitamin D alone did not reduce fracture risk in healthy middle aged and older adults, but the calcium factor was missing in the study. The second factor has to tie to ethnicity and gender. It is known that people with naturally darker skin tones get less vitamin D from sunlight. Now, although this study did not see any fracture differences in African Americans, which is about 20% of the study participants, the study had a very small sample size of the Asian or Pacific Islander population. It is long established that South Asian and South Asian women, in particular, living in Western society, are prone to vitamin D deficiency. Not only does the darker skin tone limit vitamin D production, but also less sun in higher latitude countries, and especially cultural acceptability, also limits skin exposure to the sunlight. A study in the British Journal of Nutrition reported that as much as 20% of middle aged UK South Asian population might have a very severe vitamin D deficiency, which is less than 15 nanomoles per liter, or about 55% were severely deficient, which is less than 25 nanomoles per liter. And the third factor is diet. Now, I'm all about food, but it is hard to get all the vitamin D you need from diet alone, and few food naturally contain vitamin D. Naturally, vitamin D is found in fatty fish, eggs, and mushrooms. Someone who follows a vegan diet would only have one dietary source of vitamin D, and this study did not address how vitamin D supplements affect people with specific diet restrictions. So I think the bottom line question we should ask is not if vitamin D is helpful, but in what population is helpful. Vitamin D helpful. So, for those of you who are new here, I'm not a medical doctor and I'm not suggesting if you should or should not take vitamin D supplements, and I'm also not recommending a particular product. But I believe everyone has a unique situation. Your genetics, your diet, and your geographical locations can affect how your body produces and utilizes vitamin D. And my opinion is that vitamin D is an essential hormone in the bodies, and it has numerous physiological roles. And this new New England Journal of Medicine study does not change my mind about vitamin D. And we often hear a term called precision medicine, and I think in these days, a all-size-fits-all blanket recommendation is not the best practice. That is all for this week, and I hope you've learned something new from this video. And if that's the case, please like, share, and leave me a comment. And I know vitamin D is a huge topic, and I am only covering a one study in this video, and it takes numerous updates, numerous videos to cover a constant, revolving topic. So if this is a topic that you care about. You may want to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss the next update. And lastly, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again in my next video. Meanwhile, please stay safe, healthy, and take care. Bye.